Hello folks and welcome to another devlog video for my automation game that I'm making in Godot. The next big task that I want to focus on is adding more resource types as well as recipes for combining those materials. Typically in an automation game the progression comes from using a small number of base materials to create more and more complex items by processing them in various machines. I found this free software called draw.io which I used to plan out my food theme tech tree. This gives me a good idea of what kind of items I need to make and how I'm going to combine them in the game. The plan for this morning then is to spend some time in a sprite and draw as many of these as I can. And these are some of the new resources that I've just added. So I've got potatoes down here that will produce potatoes. I've got sunflowers here that will make sunflower seeds. And we've got water here that's going to make fish. I wanted some of the tiles to be able to produce different types of material. For example, the cows produce beef when I put an extractor on them, but I also want to be able to get milk from them. And the same goes for ponds. When I put an extractor over a pond, I get fish, but I also want to be able to extract water. The way I addressed this was by adding an additional machine, which is a fluid extractor. The code for it is basically the exact same as my normal extractor, but when I place this down on a tile, it extracts the fluid equivalent of whatever that tile holds. The way I did this was by creating an array of the two different types of material that each of these tiles can have. So for example, the cow can make beef as well as milk. Well, I put both of those into an array and assigned it into the cow tile. This way, depending on what machine I've put on top of it, will determine what resource it creates. Now that I have all of those raw materials added, I needed to create the recipes for processing them. I did this by setting up dictionaries for my different machine types, which would take a raw material input and then provide a processed output. And that's how I set up all of my additional recipes. Water and flour combine into dough. They can be cooked into bread in the furnace. Similarly, bread and cooked beef can then be combined into a burger. Milk taken from the cows using the fluid extractor is processed into cheese. Then the burger goes into the combiner with cheese and we've got a cheeseburger. And from this you can start seeing a small factory emerging. The game has a default grey background which I would like to replace with a grid since the whole thing is grid based. I initially tried doing this with the tile map by drawing an individual grid tile and then filling a large area of the tile map. This kind of worked, but it had one major drawback, which was that when I zoomed in or out or panned the camera, I had to update all of those tiles. This was quite expensive and it didn't seem like an efficient way to do it. So instead, I opted for using a parallax background image. This approach is a bit limited though, because Godot only repeats the background once. So on a bigger resolution screen, or if the game is zoomed out, the background doesn't actually fill the whole screen. To fix this, I had to make my own custom code that created the required number of background images to fill the screen. This was done by taking the screen resolution as well as the zoom variable to figure out how many pixels are actually visible on the screen. Based on that, I calculate how many background images I'm going to need. Now it's finally time to start thinking about some kind of user interface. And I want to start with giving the player a way of selecting the machines from a menu. Right now you can select machines with the keyboard, and I still want to keep that, but the primary selection method will be this menu that I've quickly put together in Canva. It will have all of the machines in a row with some of the similar machines grouped together. The extractor and fluid extractor for example, the furnace and slicer since they're both processing machines, and the splitter and merger, all of these will be grouped. I started off with setting up the various UI components to make up this toolbar down here. And then I connected all of the signals to the various machines. So now I can select these machines by clicking on them on this toolbar, as well as using the keyboard like before. I then hid the grouped machines and I set up toggling. So when you select a machine and then you select it a second time, it toggles onto its other variant. And this works both with the keyboard and the mouse. All it does is hides one of the buttons and makes the other button visible. I also wanted to somehow link my keyboard input to the buttons rather than handling the two separately, which is when I noticed that the button node actually has this shortcut attribute. So I'm going to go through all of my keyboard inputs and I'll set them up as shortcuts here. 
I also realize at this point that there's a bit of an issue with using these texture button nodes. The way they're set up is that you can use a different image for each of the different states that the button can be in. And that's really good if you do have different images for it all. But I just want a little shadow to appear when I hover over one of the buttons. So I don't want to have to draw this for every single one of my machine buttons. The way I fixed this was by changing those texture buttons back to just regular button nodes and using that image as the icon of the button. I then added the hover and the active effects by creating a theme that I applied to all of the buttons in the game. So down here, for each of the states that the button can be in, I just configured the texture that I would like to apply to it. And this is the effect now. So the actual button icon stays exactly the same, but whenever I hover over, this grey shadow appears, and when I select one of the buttons, it changes to a white colour. The other thing that I was having a little bit of trouble with was that when I selected something, I was actually able to click through this toolbar, and I would be placing items when I was trying to select something else. The way I got around that was by adding this area 2D that just covers the entire of the toolbar. I then have a couple of signals here that are linked to that area 2D node. The first one triggers when I mouse over that toolbar and the second one triggers when the mouse leaves the toolbar. And all they both do is they change this variable inside of my main game loop called mouse enabled. So when I mouse over the toolbar, I disable the mouse. And when I leave the toolbar, I enable it again. There might be more efficient ways of doing this, but it works pretty well for me here. I'm able to drag across, but as soon as the mouse is inside of this area, it stops putting down any items. The last thing that I want to do on this toolbar is have some kind of visual indicator that tells the player which machines are in a group and how many machines are in a group, as well as which one is actually toggled at the time. I play around with a few different ideas in my Canva design. One of them was to have this sort of slide out menu. So if you hover over a button that has more than one machine in it, it would slide out and it would show you the other machines. I also thought about having them kind of shuffle like this, just on top of each other, and then when you toggle it, they would swap places. But the design that I settled on was to have this little panel in addition to the main panel. And this would just have a couple of little lights to indicate first how many buttons are in that group and second which one of them is currently active. And this is the final result. So I've got one of these panels on top of each of the grouped sections of machines and by default the first machine in each group is the one that's selected. So that's what's marked by this little green light. But if I was to select this extractor here and then click it again to toggle, you will see it changes the machine to a different one, but also the light here went from left-hand side to the right-hand side. And I've also got this working with the keyboard. So if I was to select the furnace with the keyboard and then press it again, it flicks over to the other one. And I can just keep toggling between the two. One thing that I struggled with when developing this was how to make these mini panels a part of my overall toolbar. And I tried different configurations of containers, VBox containers, HBox containers, but in the end, I just couldn't do it. Whenever I added one of these mini panels into a container together with a button, it just moved all of them down because it treated it as one bigger object. So the remaining buttons that weren't in groups weren't aligned with them anymore. So after a lot of frustration, I ended up doing it in a bit of a hacky way. These containers are actually separate to the main one. This here is my main panel container, and then these toggle panels are separate items. So they can be moved around independently, and I've just manually positioned them to be roughly in the right place. It's not perfect, but it does the job, and it means that I can just continue with the rest of the game. One final thing I wanted to quickly talk about is how my workflow has developed in the last few weeks. I have been using this Notion dev board from the start as a way of organizing my tasks, tracking what's completed, what's currently in progress, and what I still need to do. But I didn't have a lot of detail below this level. Each of these high-level tasks had a pretty brief description of what they should do. With the UI, however, I broke it down into a lot of small individual tasks, like drawing the initial concept in Canva, setting up the hover and active effects on the buttons, and adding keyboard shortcuts to the buttons. And each time I completed one of these tasks, I would push the code to GitHub. This really helped me to avoid procrastination because it meant that the tasks were small and manageable. And overall, it was much less daunting. This may seem like a really obvious way of working, but I'm figuring this stuff out as I go and I'm always trying to improve my workflow. So that's it for this devlog. Next, I wanna focus on a couple of things. I want to add a menu to the game and more importantly, I will start thinking about the progression system. 
So how will the player be able to access new resources? How will the new machines be unlocked? And just work out overall what the objectives will be in the game. So for now, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.